Between 410 and 455, the Western Roman Empire came under the influence and sometimes the outright control of warlords, both Roman and non-Roman. The first of these men really was Constantius, who had recently defeated the usurper Constantine III in Gaul and had been made consul in 413 after celebrations of his victory in the capital of Ravenna. Like so many other prominent military men of the late empire, Constantius came from the border regions, having been born in Nisus, modern-day Nice, Serbia. With the defeat of Constantine III and the other usurpers like Jovinus, Constantius was probably the most powerful man in the Roman Empire, at least in the West. And he was able to deal with lingering problems which had taken a backseat due to the immediate threat of the usurpers. The final nail in the coffin which ended the chaos of the early 400s was the defeat of Heraclianus in Africa, but dealing with this threat meant placing a hold on the export of African grain to Italy. So when Adolf, king of the Visigoths, who had Galla Placidia, Honorius' sister, was asked to return her to the court, the sources tell us that Constantius withheld the grain rations which were promised to the Visigoths to help speed things along but it's possible that that withholding of the grain was not actually intentional. Probably in response to this, the Visigoths assaulted Marseille, and although they were defeated there, they did manage to lay siege to and take the three cities of Bordeaux, Narbonne, and Toulouse. Later that year, in the summer of 414, Adolf finally married Honorius' sister, Gallup Placidia, arguably the woman who, more than anyone else, embodied the Roman Empire, as the medievalists David Perry and Matthew Gabriel argue in their recent book, The Bright Ages, and together they had a son named Theodosius, but he died soon after being born, and Priscus Italis was once more raised as a rival emperor backed by the Visigoths. There is a story which goes along with all of these events. The historian Erosius recorded that Adolf wanted to replace Romania with Gothia, but eventually he came to the realization that the Visigoths were incapable of being civilized and living by Roman law, so he resolved to enter into an agreement with the Roman state and protect the empire with Gothic military force. In all likelihood, this was either Adolf making a joke, or it was another example of the Romans simply seeing the Visigoths as nothing other than filthy barbarians, because as barbarians they were incapable of obeying laws and being civilized. In any case, the marriage to Galla Placidia placed Adolf within the imperial household, at least in theory. This, however, did not mend relations between the Romans and the Visigoths, and Constantius attacked the Goths in southern Gaul and blockaded the cities they had taken, forcing the Goths to retreat into Spain, but only after sacking the city of Narbonne. The Goths took Barcelona and it was made their capital, but the next year, in 415, Adolf was killed by assassination. Now, there are two stories here. The first is that Adolf had made fun of a man named Everulf for being short, so Everulf stabbed him, and the other is that Adolf killed someone described as a king of part of the Goths, and one of the servants of that man, a person called Dubius, killed Adolf. So who was this person that is named as king of part of the Goths? Historians are not that certain, but probably it was Saurus, one of the Gothic commanders who was in the service of the Emperor Honorius, whose forces by this point likely were absorbed into the main Visigothic body. His brother, a man called Sergeric, took over as leader, and for a week the supporters of Adolf were massacred, and Galla Placidia was abused and humiliated, but Sergeric was killed and replaced by a Goth named Valia. The Romans continued to attack and blockade the Goths in Spain, and it led to the Goths starving, and the Vandals apparently selling them grain at the ratio of one solidus, one of the main Roman coins with a fairly high gold content, to one spoonful of grain, which apparently led to the Vandals mockingly referring to the Visigoths as spoonies. Eventually, the Visigoths made peace with the Roman Empire and returned Galla Placidia, where she married the general Constantius, and apparently she did this unwillingly which has led some to speculate that perhaps she and Adolf did indeed love each other. Priscus Italis, the man who had been raised to the status of emperor and deposed twice, attempted to escape, but he was caught and exiled to the Aeolian Islands, but not before being mutilated. We don't know too much about this peace treaty or really anything about what happens next in Spain. 
As is so often the case, especially in ancient history, we simply lack the source material, and what we do have is not exactly in depth. At some point, though, after the Vandals, Alans, and Suaves had crossed the Rhine and made their way into Spain in 410 or maybe 411, many of them decided to settle in Spain and divided up the province by drawing lots. One group of the Vandals, the Seelings, and the Alans got Baetica and Lusitania, what is today more or less southern Spain and most of Portugal. There have been suggestions by some historians that the division was a formal arrangement, seeing the barbarians as being in an alliance of some form with Constantine III while he was based in Spain, but suffice to say that our surviving sources don't really support this conclusion. By 416, with the Goths in formal treaty with the Romans, they were sent against the Vandals and the Alans, and it is that conflict and the eventual settlement of the Visigoths in Gaul that we'll take up in the next video.